So this is my 20 minute single take. I'd like to weigh in on deep images. Um, I'll give you a raw, candid, 20 minute long treatise on the show I'm doing. <clears throat> I'm rough. I'm in the hospital. Um, I've been extremely ill for weeks. <clears throat> I'm not going to die. That's going to disappoint some of you watching. Sorry, but, um, so, uh, Deep Images began because I wanted to, I was inspired by the kind of shows that I've always liked, uh, on YouTube that, two kinds, one that were passionate about geeky things, uh, passionate about things like cinema as an art form and comic books as an art form and music as an art form and I touched on all these in my uh, uh, series that I've been doing on my channel called Henry Covert's Blue Review I don't know why I put my name in it it didn't really ever <laughs> hit the plateau of popularity to warrant such a such an egomaniacal move um, so what I did was, I kept thinking, let's have some guests on, and have some conversation. I mean, I really liked the frankness of being to, able to just, you know, uh, spill into the void all of my um, peculiar and sometimes controversial opinions. But I, I did long for conversation. I had some friends that I had had some terrific conversations. Uh, on the phone and uh, in text, some only in text. Uh, some of them could only phone, could only communicate in text. Their phone skills were rough. Um, but I uh, was inspired by the kind of things we were talking about, and the angles that we were exploring. Um, so that's something that I've been developing for a few years in my back brain. Uh, the next thing is. Um, I once was engaged to be married uh, to a young lady who was a, it was slash is a brilliant and beautiful uh, artist, um, very talented, uh, very problematic individual uh, within the continuum of my existence. But fortunately, she no longer occupies any space within that continuum time, space, or otherwise. Uh, I did write a cathartic Flicker Street story, an exorcism, if you will, um, and finally dealing with and recovering, healing from uh, her tearing us asunder. But one thing she and I would talk about a lot was, uh, you know, uh, we had both independently of each other, and then, as with many things, we connected with I uh, found out that we had a commonality in wishing to do a kind of philosophical, uh, different kind of uh, film talk show uh, on YouTube. Uh, YouTube being just the, the predominant venue, you know, 20 years ago it could have been a public access show. Um, I, I had a chance a few times to uh, produce, co-produce and, and appear on camera in a in a public access show about movies at two different occasions, two different long stories, neither germane to this narrative. So, yes, I have an IV. No, I'm not an IV drug user. Um, well, I guess I am technically <laughs> right now, but um, we wanted to approach it as uh, like take a movie that, that has layers, you know, break it down and uh, talk about not only the expected things, the aesthetic elements, uh, the narrative elements, uh, the creative elements, but like uh, the inner meanings, the uh, socio-political, uh, socio-cultural, uh, religious, spiritual, if applicable, the psychosexual, if applicable, um, the existential, uh, 
matters at hand uh, and the characters, analyzing the characters, the psychology of the characters. So this person was very interested in analyzing the world from a, from a very unconventional and singular place uh, of psychology, um, philosophy, uh, and magic and the occult and the various other uh, disciplines and art forms as am I all of these things so you may ask yourself why the fuck didn't it work out oh, you know seeing as how I, I try to avoid litigation as far as people's personal you know matters I don't know where this person lives currently uh, and I'm, I'm not really interested either uh, but if, if you wish to track her down you know Maybe if you thumb through all of my archives of, of recorded whatever, you'll figure it out and find her. She's very elusive, but she is up and coming in the uh, alternative and underground our community. Um, and you can ask her that, the why. Um, so, but that was a sh one of the many, many projects that we were talking about and, and, and in my mind, planning to manifest uh, to use a word uh, she and I bandied about quite a bit. So, enough ruminations on such matters. Um, so that was a seed planted, another phrase that, that we shared between us, which we came up with individually of each other and connected and went, woo, synchronicity. So it's important to tell a, a tiny fraction of that tale because her presence did change my life. Definitely within my story, Flickr Street, uh, and definitely within this idea, and a lot of my ways of thinking about things and, and being creative. Um, she, in other ways, she, she wrecked my life in a material sense and, and almost destroyed it. But I'm here, I'm in a hospital, I'm, I'm very ill with two different maladies, and uh, um, I'm indigent financially. Um, and close to losing my home. So, if I trace all my bad decisions I've made in the in near five years since she left, uh, they can all be traced to her leaving. But I shoulder responsibility for them because you know I made I made those decisions. I I, I or, or maybe they weren't even decisions made. They were just things I did wandering about in a, in a, you know, fog of despair. Um, so that was the beginning of that. I had two friends, Sean Lee Levin and Tim Tolbert, who I would have these kind of discussions with, though, and Tim and I especially started going into different, deeper planes, uh, talking about uh, analyzing characters uh, in comic books, superheroes, and science fiction fantasy, um, and in film quite a bit. Um, uh, and, you know, Sean and I had been working on kind of unconventional takes and, and theories about such matters for, for a number of years uh, through correspondence and uh, I had met in person a couple of times. So uh, I considered him kind of a right-hand man in these things. I wanted Tim to be my left-hand man, but Tim um, seemed a little reluctant at first about actually doing the on-camera thing. Um, but nonetheless, those two were first and foremost. Uh, then I approached about a dozen people who, for various reasons, uh, I felt would uh, bring something unique uh, to the project, a perspective. Uh, and that was important to me, personalities and perspectives. Uh, they could be different than mine, uh, not so ground-shakingly different that there would be constant strife and conflict. Though some of that, those emerged. Um, though I didn't anticipate it at the time. Um, I'll just quickly go over who my immediate picks were. These aren't in order, order of importance, or order of who I approached first, but they were all within my, within my mind on a spectrum. Uh, Bill White, a, a friend of 30 years, um, uh, Bill Mulligan, um, that's it. No, just kidding. Keith Howell, uh, Frank Schildener, uh, Francis Chu, um, Justin Cotton, um, Marco Antonio Frietis, 
um, Shelly Drakrai. Uh, I'm thinking there's several others, but they either turned me down cold or they quickly went south. Um, th those are some primary ones that I, you know, lobbied with. Um, you know, there were people I considered kind of out of my league uh, who I later approached when I had more material recorded and an actual show created. Um, people such as Robert Monell, for instance. Um, but yes, those eight, me, Tim, uh, so it's about ten people, but there were there were more. But those were the first ones that came to mind. I know I'm missing about five or six. Uh, a friend, Chris Bovax, was one. Um, uh, D Strong was someone I wanted in there for his perspective. Uh, a buddy of mine. Um, I should have written the list down. <laughs> But anyway, uh, so I, I'm afraid I'll forget some people, sadly. Dwayne Cochran was foremost among them as someone that I, I needed help with producing and creating this thing from a technical point of view. He was one of the important ones. I'm sorry, he just now entered my brain pan. Um, how do I know this is going to be a part one? And I'm only halfway through part through it. Um, I believe there were quite a few others you know, not an enormous amount, but you know, there are people I kind of checked off on a list, but these are some of the ones that I thought were very important, you know, that, that would offer something very important in the outset. There were people I felt were on that keel as far as sensibility, but I felt as though due to past interactions that there would be some kind of oil and water mixture. Uh, one was Scott Andrew Hutchins. Um, in time, I did approach him and consider him more strongly when some of my other uh, others I was interested in uh, did not pan out or, or turn me down. So it's important to, that I mention him. He was not one of my original choices, but he was one of my uh, secondary choices. Um, so <clears throat> how did it start? So basically, you know, I I had collected if you want to put it, a, a small cadre of people I was in touch with among these this larger group uh, on a semi-regular basis. So Lana Gentry was one. I almost forgot her. She was one who was very interested and also said her husband would be involved, could be involved as well. Um, others will occur to me, but these are some big ones. So I envisioned creating a group chat on Messenger with all of these various people, you know, knew, knowing they'd number probably toward 20 or more, and that eventually they would be weeded out, called, whatever, um, until I arrived at, you know, the ideal group. It was, you know, we're taught in art school and especially sculpting that art can be uh, additive or subtractive. So. I'm a, a subtractive artist. I like to put a whole bunch of things together, just whatever comes to mind, whether I'm painting, uh, doing music, drawing, you know, uh, making lists, whatever. I create way too much material, a large amount of material, a large ratio to what's going to be the ultimate product. And then I gradually sculpt around it. I, I'm subtractive until I like hone it down to what you know I want and this is kind of how I operate some people are are additive they start with um, something uh, very um, solid and singular and build and build from there so I just throw it all out on the canvas and then gradually whittle it down till it's till an image emerges and uh, I have a Facebook group that I founded in February of uh, 2019 called Deep Images and I just love the word deep of course I'd always wanted deep to be part of some project I did and that goes back to just go ahead and say Deep Purple is one of my very favorite bands um, I always wanted to if I had it well I've had several bands if one of my bands if I had an album of space rock I wanted to call it deep um, but uh, how do you conflate deep with uh, cinema, film, whatever? 
and I just thought of images and imagery and that way film and the art of film and cinema and, and by extension of course television and video uh, would all be the images but it would dovetail into anything you know ocular or anything we can take in through the eyes uh, that stimulates the brain and that you know such as visual art illustration uh, and of course the moving picture uh, just as moving pictures are to photography, photography also being a, an art of its uh, that I would draw in there and make you know crucial. Um, just as photography, uh, you know, evolved uh, and moving pictures, you know, sprung from photography. It's it's need to break free and move. Uh, comic books and sequential art as we know it, uh, our graphic novel um, creations, those came from illustrations, drawings uh, drawn by the hand and of course now also by computers um, and their need to move you know, you're telling a story panel by panel so that is you're moving it along and your eye is creating the closure between the panels as brilliantly established in Scott McCloud's book Understanding Comics. So all of these elements would be in play because obviously photography feeds into film in a huge way and of course comics there there is they're both art forms where you're telling a story visually uh, comics do not have the advantage of music uh, film unites all of these disciplines you know theater through the narrative and photography through the mode in which it is captured the technology um, music uh, is added into it and sound um, and uh, you know, and it expresses a story and through images, just like uh, you know, uh, comic books, the comic strips. Um, so film was really the, to me, the ultimate summation, summation, the ultimate pinnacle uh, of all of these other disciplines put together, possibly at their at their best. It's it's just you're creating something like life. You know, you're, you're creating like life a story that is living that's moving with real people the actors in it and within it and uh or in animation real voices personalities and with a soundtrack which you know I, i've always tried to create a soundtrack to my own life and and I, I i've made a soundtrack to my own story flicker street which is uh multimedia as i go you know as i write i have songs and albums that that uh, put me in the mood of course other filmmakers have talked about doing that and sometimes they end up incorporating those those same exact songs they hear in their head into the movies in this finished form and then other times through copyright uh, snafus they're not able to do that um, but in any case I felt as though deep images summed it up uh, I had an incredible image in my mind from Jean Cocteau's uh, 1950 film Orpheus or Orfe, which is one of my top 10 favorite films ever and, and to me says so much about being an artist and the gaze and looking and the artist's relationship uh, with his own gaze with his reflection and I think Cocteau says I think in the movie itself you know every time we gaze in the mirror we are beholding our own death because we're literally aging in real time in front of this uh, image reflected back at us just as I am right now you know we're gradually dying we're dying the moment we are born um, and, the, and in one scene you know uh, they give uh, Orpheus the, the great poet uh, these rubber gloves you know low, low rent special effects but brilliant and he puts them on and he puts his hand to the mirror and the mirror becomes like water and uh, of course they use water for the effect